Welcome back to the channel, everyone. If you haven't done it yet, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel to keep things going. Today, I'm talking about how you can insert R code into a Quarto document. And it's really straightforward, so there's not a whole lot to learn there. It's an easy method, but I will show you what that looks like inside of the source code and inside of the rendered document with an example. So let's go ahead and take a look at the top of our new Quarto document that we made. Uh, again, you'll see that it has a header and in there we have our title. And we have the format, which is HTML, which you may have noticed before, but it's a little bit different here. This changed to uh, include some information about code folding, which I'll talk about later. Currently, this is set to false, so the document should behave like you've seen it behave previously. There's also a, uh, a line of code here that says code summary, and it has some text show the code. So. Uh, what this will allow us to do is to dynamically show and hide the code in the rendered document. So we'll have to take a look at that later. As far as the document itself, we just have another header. And then below that, we have what we call a code chunk. This one specifies that we're using the R programming language, which uh, allows us to see the highlighting and everything uh, that comes with that here in this document. So to create this, you need three back ticks, a curly bracket, and then the letter R, and then a closed curly bracket. And then at the bottom of the code chunk, you have three more back ticks. Inside of here, we have a really simple uh, set of instructions for R. We are creating uh, some data vectors. One has the letters A, B, and C. And the second one has uh, three values for what I'm calling profit. So we have teams and profit. Uh, it's just a made up scenario. And then we have a data frame, which uses parentheses. And in that we store team and profit, and then we can print the data frame. So if you're not too familiar with R, this should be uh, something you wanna try on your own. If you're familiar with it, this should be old news and quite easy. Uh, but that's really all you need to do to insert R code inside of a Quarto document. Really, you can get away with the three back ticks and the letter R helps specify uh, what's inside of it. Below that, we have some options that you may want to use with your code junk. So there are multiple, I'm not going through all of them here, but two very important ones are echo and warning. So sometimes you'll see warnings on your code when it runs. It could be that something's outdated and you get a warning about that. It could be that some data points were missing. So uh, it's not the end of the world, but you want to see those sometimes when you're working with your code, but not necessarily in the output. So you can suppress that so it doesn't show up in the rendered document. And then the echo includes the actual code that you write here in the document in the output. So if you don't want to see that at all, you can turn that off. If you're doing something instructional like I'm doing, then you probably would want to see that code so you can show people what was going on. But if you're working on a reproducible report, maybe your supervisor doesn't need to see the actual analysis. They just want to see the, the table or the chart or whatever it is. So with these two, you can suppress those and it overall makes a nicer looking output. So I want you to look here in my source code. You'll see, again, a really simple scenario where we create two variables and then add them together to make a third and then print that last one. And that will generate the number nine. So we have a variable that equals five, one that equals four, we add them together, we get nine. Uh, what that does though in the output is it will show up. That's the, uh, the echo that I was talking about. So, so this code actually will show up in the render document. If you don't want that, you need to suppress the echo by saying echo equals false. So here there's a special way to write it. Uh, you can sort of make that a, a comment style um, inclusion here that goes inside the code chunk. So I just listed them here. You'll see these statements appear as pre-formatted text in the output soon. But in the code chunk itself, you just go uh, right into it and you write the pound sign, this vertical pipe, and then echo colon false. And that will suppress the echo of that code into the output. And then you can do the same thing with a warning. It's the same format. 
And then when you run that, you'll only see the number nine. You won't see the code that generated it. So I included both here so you can see it in the final document. And then lastly, I have a, uh, a quick example. We're using some data that I grabbed from a chart I saw online. It's related to the quilting industry and the value of the industry over around the last 20 years. So in this example, it's a little bit more in depth with respect to the R code itself. So if you're not familiar with the language, this may look a little too much, but um, if you're familiar with it, we are using some simple data points and the ggplot2 library to achieve uh, the visualization, as well as the base R library for the first visualization, which is quite simple. So first, um, we have our two values, one uh, our two vectors, one for the years and one for the value of the industry. So I grab these directly from a chart. I'll have it linked so you can find it yourself if you'd like. And then uh, the simple base R command to, to create a bar plot like the one that was originally provided by the, uh, the website, uh, we just need the, the bar plot command and then the Y axis is value and then the X axis names we're grabbing from our year data. And that produces a bar chart. It's really quite simple, but it's not what I would consider a, a professional publication quality chart. So the next thing we want to do is create a line chart. And to do that, I'm using this library ggplot2. So if you're not familiar with R, it has a lot of powerful commands already, but you can extend that by including libraries. So here, we simply give R more capabilities by including this library. So in our studio, you may need to install that. I can talk about that at another time, but I already have it installed, so I'm just calling it here to load it. We are creating a data frame, and then here we have quite a bit of code, but this is what generates our plot. And I'll talk about ggplot, I'm sure, at another time, but you can study this and try it out yourself if you'd like to. So with that said, let's see what the output looks like. Again, I click render on save and click the save button to process everything. And remember we had code folding turned off. So let me drag that over here and we can take a look. So again, we have our headers, we have the code, we have our data frame that we created initially. And uh, that just is an example of how you can include the R commands inside of a Quarto document. So as you can see, they're visible and then the output is shown here. Some options, again, echo and warning. You may wanna suppress that. So again, we, we see the code and we see the output, but if we include these two commands, the only thing that is left is the output. So we can tell that our, uh, our echo was working properly. And then our example with visualization, there's some text, some explanatory text that I included. So you have some background on what this example is about. And then we can see our code here. And below that, you'll see a warning. So this is what would have been suppressed if I had included that. Um, and so this is the output up to this point. So uh, the library was loaded here, but the, the plot was shown directly below that. It was, it was divided somehow. Um, but below that, we have some additional code that we use for our fancier plot, our, our nicer looking, more minimalistic plot. Uh, and this one's a line chart, so it's different than the bar chart. And with that running, we can see this chart and on the vertical axis, we have the value in billions. And then on the X axis, we have the year. And I just chose to put the years on these data points because they are not equally spaced out. So I thought this might be a little bit easier to read. All right, let's go back up to the top of the document and look at this code folding stuff. So at the very top in the header for this Quarto document, we see code fold false. And then we have our code summary show the code. So you saw what that looks like already in that there wasn't something to look at, but now we want to change this to true. And then you can make this statement, whatever you want. So we can make it show me the code and we'll save that and render it. And then we'll check that out and see what it looks like. All right. So, um, here we see on each of the code chunks, show me the code. 
And you don't see the code at first, but if you click the little drop down triangle, it suddenly appears. It's a really nice interactive feature for this document. You don't have to do any programming to make that work. It's already handled by Quarto. So that's one of these really nice features. If you want to show this report to someone um, like a supervisor that doesn't want to see the code, you can do that, but maybe some technical people want to see the code or analyze the methods that you used. So you can always do that. So depending on who's looking at this, that may be a helpful feature. And you can see that it does it universally on all of these. Uh, the reason it does that is because it was included in the header for the document. If you need to, you can apply that change individually to specific code chunks and not universally. So that's it for today. Including our code in your Quarto document is really quite easy, and I encourage you to try it at home. I'm going to link these files so you can grab them if you want to try them out yourself. And thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks.